Okay, it's time for another EFHL Spotlight video. This time we'll be looking at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now before I start, uh, I am happy to report that uh, all 352 players in my 32-team uh, EFHL league now have homemade bases beneath their feet. I got on this, this supreme roll uh, the other night uh, where base after base was coming out real nice. Uh, good running backs and wide receivers. So, I, you know, I wasn't about, with that kind of momentum and luck, I wasn't about to, to stop. And before I knew it, it was about 3.30 in the morning. And I finally <laughs> said, okay, I got to go to bed. I got to be up in two hours. And, of course, the, when, I, when I hit it the next day, it, uh, it, it took a little while to find my stride and get some, some more nice bases. But the point is, uh, now they all have bases beneath their feet. Now, it's, it's likely that, you know, we still have several more teams to evaluate here. It's likely that I'll find bases... Uh, among those that I feel like I'm probably going to want to replace or maybe swap around. But I do have some extras that I've ended up putting on some of the uh, figures that were donated to the channel by Coach Wallace. Um, so we'll just have to see about that. It, it's a safe bet that, uh, you know, maybe even today. I don't think so, though. These were doing great yesterday when I, I looked at them. But uh, let's look at the paperwork for the Buccaneers here. John Gruden is the coach. They play in Raymond James Stadium. Uh, which is open, so the, the Bucks will be uh, subject to any wet conditions and maybe windy conditions. You, there's not going to be any snow or um, any fr uh, freezing cold temperatures in, in Tampa. Um, uh, of course, they play in the NFC South. Uh, this season, they're going with an, uh, an option offensive philosophy and a 4-6 defensive philosophy. Currently, in the preseason, the franchise player is Rondé Barber playing at running back. Now, uh, great offensive rating at 12 and uh, above average defensive rating at 11. They've got some nice individual team stats. Uh, a wide receiver score of 16 and a running back score of 15, but that all sets uh, an offensive line score of 10, which is still average. Uh, meanwhile, a defensive line score of 10, but a linebacker and defensive back scores of 13 each. So they, they look good on paper. Um, pretty good... Uh, Player rating points to begin. Um, like I said, Rondé Barber is the franchise player beginning the season here with 31 player rating points. Uh, no one below 20. I'm not sure there anyone in, in the EFHL this season starts below uh, 20 player rating points. I, without looking that up, I wouldn't be able to confirm that. But uh, let's just go ahead and now look at these bases. Now, I, I've not looked at these since last night, so I haven't warmed them up today. So... Uh, I won't be surprised if, if there's some shenanigans where I feel like the bases aren't obeying my instructions because I haven't warmed them up today. But we'll, uh, we'll get started here. Now, uh, no, Tom Brady is not on the Buccaneers because I put him on the, uh, uh, on the uh, Patriots. But at quarterback on this team, number 12, uh, also playing as a middle linebacker and uh, the punter and also the holder on uh, special teams, is Doug Williams. Now, um, I know a lot, a lot of you will be saying, well, shouldn't he be playing for the Redskins? It's, it's another one of those deals where I felt like to avoid some sort of hard decision, I'd just uh, move around their careers. You know, Doug Williams played for the Buccaneers, so he might as well be the quarterback for the Buccaneers because Tom Brady is playing for the Patriots. And you have Joe Theismann on Washington's team. So uh, that's a conflict I avoided simply by putting uh, Doug on the, uh, the Buccaneers here. Let's see how his base is going to perform right now. It feels a little slow to me. I can speed that up immediately just by uh, adjusting his front prong. Well, a little bouncy off the line, but he corrected quite nicely. Let's see how he... Now, they're going to be faster headed this direction. not as picky on the quarterbacks as I am on the tight ends. Uh, and it is possible I've got the tight end and quarterback mi uh, mixed up here. I don't have the decals on them yet, of course. Getting some inconsistency on his movement here. Like I said, I have not warmed these guys up today. Now that's acceptable to me. All right, let's move on to the tight end. This is number 88. He's also the kicker for the team and a middle linebacker. This is uh, Jimmy Giles, or Jimmy Giles. I believe it's Giles, actually. Uh, 
see how he performs. Okay, very good speed. His route's a little wonky. Might have to adjust him on the base to correct that. Yeah, he's still doing it. He was he was pulling to the uh, left yesterday. Today he's pulling to the right. And yeah, I do. That does happen with these bases. Okay, now he's all over the place. I'm going to go ahead and adjust his prongs a little bit. This could be uh, the Doug Williams figure. If I'm... Nonetheless, that's pretty good. Um, might be hard to complete a long bomb pass to this base. That's really good speed. Uh, let's just run him again to see if it's the board knocking him around. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. This trampoline is just, uh, you know, give me a lot of false reading sometimes where I feel like there's a deviation on the base route, but it turns out just to be, you know, the, the bounciness of the hot spots on this thing. We'll move on to the wide outs. Number 19, wide receiver and safety, Keyshawn Johnson. As I recall, I was happy with these wide receivers. Let's see. Okay, I'm very happy with the speed, but no, that route is unacceptable. They cannot do crap like that, or I'll never be able to complete a pass with these. Yeah, no way. All right. Okay. Let's just do some adjustments on the prongs, huh? There we go. He's still a little bouncy but that's the board uh remember how dissatisfied i was with the green bay packers wide receivers uh, i'm just picky with my skill players now uh the, the performance out of these homemade bases has gotten the ceiling has gotten so high on these things um i'm i'm real picky like what just happened right there would be a nightmare if you were lining him up to catch a pass with passing skills he did it again so that may be the base that may be the hot spot and until I get a board that doesn't suck ass, I'm not really going to know. Pardon my language. Uh, but facts are facts. Yeah, I'm... The hot spot is really screwing with uh, evaluation. It's just that hard pull and then immediate correction. That has to be the field. That can't be the base doing that. The speed is just so good on this thing, I might forgive a little uh, instability. You know, I can actually improve that by actually pulling both the prongs back a little. It's going to slow them down. But, it gives them a smoother ride. But, it also, you know, I'm still getting all this, you know, this don't fly with passing sticks, folks. Especially if it changes every single time you put him down on the field. He's still doing that. Alright, I'm going to start him right here to try to avoid that crap and see what happens. If he does it again, we'll know it's the base. I tried to, didn't it? Put him here and see what he does. This is typically the spot that just trips every base up. And he's got this dumb quick jerk to the lift on step off that immediately corrects and that would make trying to catch passes a nightmare i've already spent way too much on this particular base way too much time and now i've overcompensated it is better it is better and of course the motor is throttling up and down which makes this also very very challenging to figure out there we go yeah, you play with these enough and you get them where you want them the that's why you should always warm your bases up before a, a game. And I know, folks, time is at a premium for a lot of people, myself included, as we come out of uh, this past year. But we'll move on to the next wideout uh, number uh, and safety, number 13, Mike Evans. Now, without adjusting his prongs at all, let's see how he runs here. Oh, gosh, he got tripped up on a hot spot. Try again. And... He's also just a, it's it's the board bouncing these guys up and down so hard is, is part of the problem. And of course we know the board is bouncing them so high because the whole thing is 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 bowed and concave. Let's 
me, that's a pretty good result. I mean, it's it's hard to be angry about the speed on this thing, even though they're the, the field is just bouncing all over the place. And I know this coach is out there said, "Turn your field down." That doesn't make a difference, folks. In fact, turning the field down could make it worse. It just feels like there's a new trip wire on this twenty now. Yeah. All right. Mm. Starting to get angry at the game board. Okay. All right. You know, even with all this, you know, wailing and gnashing of teeth, the bass is performing quite well. There we go. See, when when the board doesn't do stupid stuff, the bases are quite nice. Now we'll move on to the uh, running backs and cornerbacks. Is this Rondé Barber? Yeah, this is the franchise player, number 20, uh, Rondé Barber. Now he, uh, yesterday at any rate, he was, he was pulling to the left. Let's see what he does today. Yeah. Still pulling to the left, but what a performance. I mean, I can't complain about that. Oh! You know, there's some out there that say you need to switch these for the uh, wide outs, and I might. Uh, you know, that's just, uh, except I think he's on this particular base because I couldn't get this base to go down the field straight on either of the wide receivers. I think that's the case. But because of you know the the way this figure is shaped, you know the runners, the Fab Five runners that tend to pull to the left because of the balance of the figure. And it kind of compensates for shenanigans you might experience on other bases or other figures. Uh, we'll move on to the other running back and cornerback. Uh, number 47, John Lynch. And uh, it looks like his base is relatively uh, up and down the middle. We'll see if that holds true today. Yeah. He pulled a little to the left. Let's see if he does the same thing headed this direction. You know, part of the problem, of course, is on step off the the, bounce, the trampoline here is bouncing them up in the air and, and sitting them back down at a different angle. Yeah. Yeah, they're definitely pulling to the left on this base. I can quickly try to do a little about that. If he pulls to the right, we'll just have to put it back to the way it was. Gosh, that seemed to make it worse. Okay, we'll exaggerate it. See. Yeah, it's overcorrected. Let's push it back in just a little to the left. Yeah, that was the field knocking him sideways. Try again. There we go. Mm. Mm. And folks, the point is not to keep him between the hashes all the way down the field. The point is consistency and uh, knowing what each base is going to do. Mm. That was good speed. He, uh, he, uh, the, the field bounced him and turned him to the left. Hit the field. Let's see. Yeah. And that time, midfield turned him to the right. See what I mean? God, this sucks. This, this board sucks. All right. And that time, it moved him on step off. It turned him. Oh, Ricardo, where are you? That's all I can say right now. Okay, my issue isn't with the base now, it's with the field, so I think we're just going to move on. Um, let's go on to the uh, uh, tackles and linebackers here. That Both those running back bases are, are performing nicely. It's better than the wideouts, in my opinion, so I might have to look at the wideouts in the future. Uh, Derek Brooks, number 55, is who we're looking at right now. And, uh, remember, our expectations are a little lower on the strength players. That said, what a performance. That's almost tight end worthy right there, if it was just a little faster. That's almost too fast for a linebacker and a tackle. That, ooh. I have to 
say this bass is performing a lot better today than it was yesterday. Uh, and I'm happy about that. And of course the backer figures don't bounce as much because they have a wider stance and are a little better balanced than the runners and the sprinters. Okay, now we'll move on to the uh, right tackle and uh, outside linebacker Paul Gruber, number 74. Yeah. And of course, everybody's going to fall over down there. That's why we don't go over there. Um, that's more of what I would expect out of a tackle or a linebacker base. You know, they don't have to be fast. They don't have to go particularly straight downfield. But you do have to know what they're going to do. Um, and I don't like that pull to the left straight off the line. That may not be the base. That may be the damn uh, hot spot right there. He's definitely pulling to the left too much for my tastes. Um, and he wasn't doing this yesterday, so maybe I should have spent some time warming these up before I hit record. Nope, oh, that's unacceptable. Uh, that is absolutely unacceptable. Um, I've thrown away worse bases or better bases than that as far as performance. So we may have to look at these prongs again. Well, as you can see, I did overcorrect just a tad. And now he'll be all right. Um, you know, the primary function of these outside linebackers, on defense anyway, is, you know, to make tackles. And if they're not blocked by a, an offensive player. That's pretty good. And, you know, if you don't know where they're going to go, then, you know, you're always going to miss a tackle. So it is important, even with, you know, your strength players, to know, you know, at least ex where you can expect them to go. That doesn't always mean they'll go that way. Now we're going to move on to the lineman figures. Left guard and uh, defensive end, number 63, Leroy Selman. Let's see. He's going to be a little slower, I think. Yeah. And that's perfectly fine. Um, the linemen aren't supposed to scream down the field as fast as the uh, wide receivers. Yep, that's good. Now we're going to move on to the right guard. Uh, number 54, also defensive end. Uh, this is Richard Wood. And after I run him, I'm going to pause and tell you a little story here. On. And <laughs> he stayed between the hashes the whole way. I did not expect that. Now, let's go put him midfield here. Uh, Richard Wood, folks, is the reason this electric football channel exists. Let me uh, let me elaborate. Um, year is probably 1978, possibly 79. I was just a toddler, and at that point, I couldn't care less about football. All I wanted to do was watch cartoons. Uh, but there was a particular player on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who already had this really colorful orange and white uniform, kind of similar to the University of Tennessee Volunteers. And there was one player on this team who had Batman symbols on his uh, elbow pads or on his shoulder pads. And uh, that got me watching football games, folks, because I I'd look for that football player to find the, the guy that, that liked Batman as much as I did as a three-year-old kid or as a two-year-old kid. And uh, from there, you know, I started watching football all the time. Now, eventually Pittsburgh became my, my favorite team. But, you know, it's, it's thanks to Richard Wood right there that uh, I ever became interested in the uh, sport of football. Now, is it possible I would have become interested later on? Yeah, it's possible, but it's highly unlikely that I would have received uh, a little uh, Terry Bradshaw football uniform from J.C. Penney's for Christmas, you know, when I was four or five years old. Uh, it's highly unlikely I would have ever gotten an electric football game uh, in 1986 or 87. Um, so in a very real and tangible uh, sense, it's, you know, it's thanks to Richard Wood that you're watching uh, this video right now. Now, I haven't, you know, done any customization on this figure. This was uh, donated to the channel from Coach Klein. has a nice face mask on him. Um, one of these days, I might paint some uh, white elbow pads on him and try 
with some toothpicks or maybe a sharpie marker to draw some little bats on those elbow pads. Otherwise, it would probably be easier just to draw some bats on his sh uh, shoulders. Uh, but there he is. There's, you know, the reason this channel exists. Now we'll move on to the uh, final player on the team here. Uh, the center, also the nose tackle and the long snapper. Number 74, uh, Ali Marpet. <laughs> Very slow, obviously, and I've had to curl the prongs considerably and push them forward or backward in order to get the, the route we're achieving with it. And he's still trying to pull to the right, uh, but that's a perfectly a satisfactory result for the center. Yeah. Actually, he's kind of doing an S. He's pulling to the left initially. That may have been the game board, uh, and he's uh, been uh, headed back right. Okay, so overall, I'm happy with these, this team. I'm a little concerned about the wide receivers, but, you know, they just may need to be warmed up a little more. Uh, let's see. You see the problem. There's just a lot. I mean, they're fast. I mean, the, the speed is spot on. I couldn't be more pleased with the speed. But uh, I'm, they're doing a lot of this, and that's unpredictability you don't want when you're trying to complete a pass with passing speed. Uh, let's... You know, for example, let's just put a ball marker here on the 20-yard line. Let's see, you know, right in front of him. Let's see what happens. Yeah, he went right by it, and uh, he may do that every single time, uh, which would make this an unsuitable uh, receiver for a long, a blue stick pass. That time he hit it. Okay, so maybe it's just the hot spot, the inconsistency of the game board itself. Um, well, that time he hit it and it knocked him over. That's something else we're going to need to explore. I might need to use a larger ball marker, and I do have one. It's just the magnet. It is so powerful. Every time I put it down, it goes boom and just moves every player on the field. But um, I, if I if I make a purchase with Tur uh, Tudor Turk <laughs> with uh, Tudor Games, that was a Freudian slip uh, between now and uh, the start of the. Uh, a, a gameplay, I might pick up one of the Tudor sets of passing sticks with uh, their, their their ball marker looks quite nice. Okay. Man, that ball marker is just knocking him down. Uh, like I said, we may just need to go with something larger. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, maybe my fears are unfounded. Uh, I don't like, you know, all this waving up and down the field uh, out of the... Uh, <sighs> out of the uh, wide receivers and running backs. And part of the reason is because I have plenty in the collection that don't do that. They just, you know, take a either a, a straight line or a sort of a, you know, a, a gentle curve, both of which I can uh, deal with. There we go. Now, you know, I think maybe falling down with for those completions knocked some sense into the base. And we'll try this guy one more time. No, it's too slow off the line. Let's, let's just do some work on this prong. Okay, now he does tend to drift to the right, so I'm going to try to correct for that. Uh, this base may need to be replaced. And I did overcorrect, so... actually superb um, let's see how he does coming this way maybe I'm just being too picky with these wide receiver bases yeah because up till the 40 or the 30 though that was actually really good okay well there you go folks Tampa Bay Buccaneers now uh, in the meantime I've uh, begun decaling uh, some figures there's, that looks really good. <laughs> That's a homemade decal right there, donated to the channel from El Toro. And I tell you what, uh, these look really, really good. I still got to put them on the front now. Now these have dried. I'll go ahead and do that next. I don't know how many of teams I can get knocked out in one day as far as decaling goes. Two at the most, I imagine, because, you know, I, once they're done, I'll let them dry and then put another coat of watered-down Mod Podge on top. And, you know, just to make sure these things aren't coming off. But right now, they look great. And I couldn't be happier with those. So, uh, 
there's the Buccaneers. Um, the next video I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to show you some of the uh, uh, homemade bases that didn't make the cut. Some of the homemade bases that I didn't feel like ripping the prongs off. I just stuck them underneath some of the other figures donated to the channel by Coach Wallace. And I, I guess I call them the practice squad bases for now. Uh, and I just want to demonstrate with those bases how even the ones that didn't make the cut are actually pretty daggum good. All right, so stay tuned for that. And, of course, you know, the next team we're going to evaluate the EFHL looks like it's going to be the Houston Texans. So stay tuned for that as well. Take care.